Hey rockers! The cool thing about Jammy Guitar is that it can keep getting better with every update of its firmware, which you can think of as the operating system of Jammy. With firmware 1.4, the three main things we've introduced are improved picking sensitivity, an onboard reverb pedal, and MIDI settings that open up new possibilities in MIDI mode. The improved string picking sensitivity means that Jammy now responds better when you're picking lightly. This applies to both the guitar mode and MIDI mode. We've added a new effect to the pedal board in our mobile app, the reverb. Here we have a few different reverb types, like room, hall, plate, and a few others, so there's plenty of room to experiment. The new MIDI settings give you more control over your instrument. First, you'll see that we now let you assign which MIDI channel each string is using. By default, it's channel 2 for the low E string, through channel 7 for the high E string. These defaults work best with GarageBand and Logic Pro. Apart from letting you play different instruments in your DAW with different strings, MIDI channels come in handy if you're using notation software like Guitar Pro or PreSonus Notion, letting you record tabs as you play. In the Jammy MIDI settings, assign the strings to channel 1 for the high E string, through channel 6 for the low E string. In Guitar Pro, go to Audio MIDI settings and select MIDI gadget as the MIDI input device. Next, select first channel for the lowest string and don't forget to enable MIDI capture. This will ensure that Guitar Pro will register the notes you play on the right strings and record the tab just as you play it. Pitch bending range lets you adjust Jammy to the corresponding range of the software instrument that you're playing. For example, some instruments like the guitars in GarageBand or Logic Pro will treat a full band on Jammy as a 4 octave pitch shift. You can get some crazy sounds out of it or even invent a new music genre. But if you just want the good old-fashioned bends, set the pitch bending range to 48 semitones, which is 4 octaves. This will let Jammy know that you're playing an instrument with a 4 octave pitch range and Jammy will actually send a smaller pitch bend value. Don't forget to set this back to 1 for the instruments that don't have that crazy bend range, which is pretty much any other instrument, otherwise it might feel like the bends aren't affecting the pitch at all. Next up are the controls related to string muting. When you play Jammy and mute the strings either with your left hand or the palm of your right hand, Jammy will send special messages called program change that let you switch between instruments or choose different articulations of the same instrument. This feature is still a little bit raw at the moment, so I suggest you keep it off for now. The send muted notes switch lets you filter out those muted notes completely. For example, if you want to play octaves while dampening all other strings. If you do want the muted notes to ring, toggle the switch back on. The following two settings let you use the jammy volume knob to control parameters inside your DAW by sending MIDI continuous control messages or CCs. You can choose which CC numbers jammy will be using. The most common ones are CC1, the mod wheel, and CC7, volume, but you can pick any value up to 127. Pressing the volume knob toggles between the minimum and maximum value, basically working as an on-off switch, and turning the knob changes the parameter continuously. Now let me set them to CC80 and 81, which don't have any default purpose, and use MIDI mapping in Ableton Live to assign them to different parameters.
That's practically all you need to know about Jemmy Firmware 1.4. What do you think of it? What features and improvements would you like to see in the next firmware updates? Let us know in the comments below. Lock and roll. Thank <laughs> you.